Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. saddle, Mr. Dillon. I swear I'm so hungry I could eat a whole hog. Yeah, but with all the hog you got this morning's cooking on that stick right there, Chester. Is it done? Well, that depends on how hungry you are. It's done. <laughs> Thank you. E- e- <laughs> That's hot, ain't it? <laughs> it sure will be good to get back to Dodd tonight and sleep in the bed again, won't it? You know something, Chester? Civilization's made you soft. Well, maybe so. But I get mighty tired of using my back for a mattress and my belly for a covering. <laughs> Obviously, you were born for greater things than rooting around on the prairie and living in the rain. It ain't been raining, Mr. Jones. Uh, no, no, it hasn't, Chester. But it will. Sooner or later, it's bound to rain. Yes, sir. Wish we'd brought some more bacon. Say, Mr. Dillon, don't old man Granby live around here somewhere? Uh-huh. Well, maybe we could buy a little from him. According to what I've always heard, old Granby wouldn't lend anybody anything. Yeah. You really think he is a rich miser, like they say? Oh, I don't know, Chester. You know, sometimes a man's entirely different from his reputation. I only met Granby once or twice. He seemed like a nice enough old fellow. Mm. It's the same. I wouldn't want to live out here all alone with nothing but a few horses for company. Yeah, well, he's used to it. Yeah, but even if he does have a lot of money hid away somewhere, there's no place to spend it out here. Granby's pretty old for the pleasures Dodge has to offer, Chester. Oh, my gee, I hope I ain't never that old. <laughs> you know, at the rate you're burning yourself out, you never will be, so don't worry about it. Uh, Mr. Dillon, I live mighty quiet for a young fellow who's... Free and still full of blood and stuff? Sure. Oh, I do. Uh, look over yonder. Huh? Over there, that string of dust laying right on the ground there. Ain't that funny? Yeah, I've been watching that. Not on the ground, though. There's a dry wash that runs along there. I think somebody's driving the stock down it. Mm. Maybe it's old man Granby. Yeah, maybe. Why don't we go over and say hello, huh? Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, Mr. Dillon? Yeah. If it is, old man Granby, maybe we might could just ask him by a little dab of bacon, reckon? Well, there's no harm in that. Oh. That looks like horses down there. Yes, sir. I can see their heads now. But I don't see nobody driving them. They belong in a minute. Now, let's wait here. Yonder he comes. Now, that's not old Granby. Now, let's ride down and say hello anyway. That's Granby's brand on those horses. You must have hired him a hand. Yeah, maybe. Hello. Hello. You working for Granby? I ain't working for nobody, mister. Oh? And where is he? 
Where is who? Granby. I don't know no Granby. Those are his horses you're driving. They are? Yeah. I ain't driving them. What do you mean? They got ahead of me in the wash there, that's all. I see. You a cowboy? Yeah, sure. I'm a cowboy. Somehow you don't look like one. You don't ride like one, either. You're asking the questions, mister. And no decent cowboy would run another man's horses down a dry wash just because he didn't want to get up on the bank and ride around them. I told you, they got in front of me, is all. How come you're not carrying a gun? Does a man have to carry a gun? No. But I'll bet you're the only man within a thousand miles of here who isn't carrying one. Well, maybe I got a better conscience than the rest of you. Maybe. Now, look, mister, you've run those horses about five miles off of old Granby's place. You want to give us a hand, we'll run them back. I'm in a hurry. It won't take long. The old man might be a couple of days fighting them if we don't. You worry about him. I got to get into Dodge. We'll ride in with you afterwards. I ain't going to do it. It'd look a lot better if you did. I, um... I'd like to, mister, but I can't. I'm leaving now. So long. Well, forevermore, Mr. Dillon, you just gonna let him go? Wait a minute, Chester. I'm gonna let him hear what lead sounds like. Oh, don't shoot! Don't shoot me! All right, then ride back here. Don't kill me, mister. I'm not gonna kill you. Unless you try to run away. Why would I try to run away? You just did, Chester. Yes, sir. Ride down the bank and head those horses off. Start them back up the wash. We'll be out of here by the time they're back. All right, sir, Mr. Dillon. You stay right close to me, fellow. And don't you try anything smart. When we get to Granby's, if he says it's okay, then you can go wherever you like. I don't know Granby. I've never been there. And we'll show you the way. Come on, let's go. Another visit with Joe and Daphne Forsythe. Joe. Joe. Joe, stop reading that paper and talk to me. I'm listening. Go ahead. Well, I was talking to Mrs. Snyder today. You know, she's the one whose boy had 31% less cavities. Uh-huh. Well, she thinks that we should buy bigger savings bonds. Uh-huh. She says that when people can afford it, it makes more sense. Oh, she says there are a lot of different denominations. They start at $25, but then there are a 50, 100, 200, and even $500 bonds. Is that so? And then with the ones we've already bought through the payroll savings plan, we'd have quite a nest egg. Uh-huh. Are you listening to me? Uh-huh. Did you know that the total accumulated compounded semi-annual interest of the Series E savings bond will amount to 93 and a third percent of the original purchasing price? Uh-huh. I thought so. Joe, what did I say? Uh, you said that United States savings bonds are a safe, easy way of investing. I did. That they help guard our country's freedom. And? They're the best investment in America's future. I said something else, too. Oh, yeah. You said that the total accumulated compounded semi-annual interest of the Series E savings bond will amount to 93 and one-third percent of the original purchase price. Well, now, how did you do that? Husband's trade secret. <laughs> Granby sure can find his horses all right now, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, but I want this cowboy here to meet him. Now we'll see if he's in the house. I'll wait for you. Get off a horse, fellow. Go on. That's better. All right, come on. We'll take a look. Well, 
What are you waiting for? Nothing. You go ahead, Chester. Looks like I'm going to have to herd this man in. Yes, sir. You've been kind of balky ever since we ran into you, haven't you? I just don't like being dragged around. I never did. Well, I just want you to meet old Granby. He'll be grateful for your help and run his horses back here. I know what you think, mister. You think I was stealing them horses. Well, I never heard of the old man. I was never near this place. So you told me. But you're here now. I ain't afraid of you or nobody. Then let's go into the house. Come on. Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what is it, Chester? Old, old Granby, he, he's in there. Oh, what's wrong? Right in the room there, Mr. Dillon. He's he just hanging there. What? Somebody went and hung him right in his own house. I don't want to see him no more. You you go take a look at him. Pull your gun and hold it on this man, Chester. If he makes some moves, shoot him. Yes, sir. Now, you just stand right there real quiet like. I ain't going to do nothing. You sure ain't. Just because I happen to be in the country don't mean I killed nobody. Yeah. Mr. Dillon will decide about that. Who is this Mr. Dillon, anyway? He's a United States Marshal. That's who he is. Uh, a Marshal? A Marshal. Looks like you run into the wrong people, fella. Here, I'll hold your gun, Chester, and you'll search him. All right, sir. Here. Turn around. All right, take it easy. Now, the house is all torn up. He must have been looking for old Granby's money. I was never in that house. Ain't nothing on him. Not a thing. All right, Chester. Here's your gun. There, gotcha. Thank you. What's your name, fellow? Trimble. Joe Trimble. Where are you from? Up north. Up north where? All over. What are you doing down here? Making a change. Sure. And some cowboy you ran into told you about Granby being rich. So you came here and you kicked the old man around and then you hung him and you tried to find the money. That's a lie. This is the first time I was ever near the place. I'm sure you did it, Tremble, but I wish I had more evidence. The court of law just might not convict you the way things stand. You gonna let me go? No, I'm not gonna let you go. I'm arresting you and you're gonna stand trial and I'm gonna do my best to see you hung. I didn't do it, I tell you. And I'll go free, too. You'll see. Now, there's something mighty wrong about you, Trimble, and I can't figure it at all. But I'm sure going to find out. Another visit with Joe and Daphne Forsythe. Hey, honey, I'm home. Daphne. Drop dead. Uh-oh, what's the matter, honey? Don't you speak to me, you you Don Juan. Don Juan? Daphne, I'm no Don Juan. No hobble espanol. Very funny. Ha, ha, ha. Well, it was no prize winner, but... No. Neither are you, you, you Lothario. I've often wondered, what's a Lothario? I don't know, but that's what the wives on TV always call their husbands. I guess it applies. Do you want me to go out and come in again? As far as I'm concerned, you can go for a long walk, preferably on a short pier. Well, oh, come on, Daphne, what's wrong? Your good friend Harry called, and he spilled the beans. Which beans? He said, quote, tell Joe he was right about those blondes. They're great, unquote. Blondes? That's what he said. <laughs> well? He didn't say blondes. He said bonds, savings bonds. What? Sure, I buy them on the payroll savings plan. And I told Harry he ought to do it too. Savings bonds have a guaranteed interest that pays back $4 for every three, which is a pretty good investment. That's a pretty good story too. It's true, so help me. That's why Harry's so happy. Savings bonds are great. Well, maybe you're right. You wouldn't really fool around with blondes, would you? You're too faithful and sweet and kind and... Fast talking. We let 
let Joe Trimble dig a grave up behind the house, and then we laid old Granby in it and covered him with dirt. I was pretty sure now that the old man had never had an extra dollar in his life and that he'd been killed for no reason at all. Now, in any way, Trimble had done a pretty thorough job of looking for the money, and he'd found nothing. On the ride into Dodge, I tried to figure out just what he was. He didn't seem to fit anywhere. He wasn't a cowboy or a hunter or a gambler or even just a drifter. Well, after we got him locked up in jail that night, Doc and I went over to the Long Branch for a drink with Kitty. And I was telling him about it. Now, how old is this fella, man? Well, around 25, I guess, Doc. Oh, well... Then he couldn't be running away from home. <laughs> He's a little old for that, kid. Yeah, well, anyways, he'll hang him. Well, I hope the judge agrees with you, Doc. And why shouldn't he? All I got so far is circumstantial evidence. Well, then you should have shot him out on the prairie. Well, it's a good thing you're not a lawman, Well, Doc. maybe if I were, there'd be fewer killings around here. <laughs> I doubt it. You going up to Hayes for the trial, man? Yeah, I have to. That'll take a week, I suppose. Oh, Bob, Why? Nothing. Only you've just been away for ten days. Oh, I got to earn a living, Kitty. Well, you could make more money gambling. Right here in Dodge. Oh, now, Kitty, don't start that again, will well, you? Good evening, Marshal. Yeah. Miss Kitty, Doc. Yes, Major. Hi, Major. I'd like a word with you, Marshal. Uh, sure, Major, sure. You excuse us. Uh, we'll go over to the bar there. I'll be back, Kitty. No hurry, Matt. Doc's got a lot of money. <laughs> now, I'll buy you a drink anytime, Kitty. Well, that's the best offer today, Doc. I had to come to Dodge on other business, Marshal, but I wanted to pass the word to you that we're looking for a man. Oh, the army, you mean? Yes, a deserter. No? Not from Fort Dodge. Oh, where was he stationed, Major? He was with the 7th Cavalry at Fort Lincoln. Up in Dakota, huh? Mm. For some reason, they think he headed south. Now, I don't have much of a description of him, just that he was a private, about 25, curly blonde hair, a scar on his left hand. Well, that fits. What was his name? He enlisted as Joe Gould, but he's known to have used the name Trimble. Well, he's right here in Dodge, Major. He, he what? I got him locked up in jail. Well, that's fine, Marshal. But how did you know that? I think he murdered an old man who lives about a day's ride north of here, and I'm going to have him tried for it. Well, that won't be necessary now, Marshal. I'll take over custody of him. Then he'd be tried at Fort Lincoln for desertion. I want him tried for murder, and i got to be there to present the evidence. Well, you could go up to Fort Lincoln. No, Dakota's out of my territory, Major. Besides, this is a civil crime. The Army wants that man, Marshal. I'm sorry, Major. He's going to be tried in Hayes first. He's, he's still a soldier, even if he did desert. Well, if a judge lets him off, you can have him, but not otherwise. Major, he tortured and hung an innocent old man. And I'm going to do my best to see him punished for it. I'll have to take this up with my superiors. Well, you better hurry. I'm going to Hayes with him tomorrow. I hope you won't regret this, Marshal. I won't, Major. Not if Trimble is properly punished, I won't. I didn't wait till morning, but started out for Hayes with Joe Trimble that night. The trial lasted a week. And in spite of all the arguments I made, the judge finally decided that there wasn't enough real evidence to convict him. I even tried to make Trimble confess, but he was too smart for that, so there was nothing to do but bring him back and turn him over to the Army. I sent word to Fort Dodge, and the next morning the Major himself appeared to take him into custody. Well, Marshal, looks as though you didn't have much of a civil case after all. Now, he killed old Granby. I know he did, but the law's the law, Major. Yes. And in the Army, orders are orders. But I'm sorry your judge didn't convict him after all. How's that, sir? Now, uh, Chester. Yes, sir. Uh, bring Trimble on, will you? Yes, sir. I will. Well, I'll give the Army credit for one thing, Major. What's that? Trimble and I rode back some 80 miles yesterday, and when we got here, he wanted to sit up and play cards with Chester. Well, there may be some bad men in the cavalry, Marshal, but they're all tough. Here he is, Mr. Dillon. Well, he's yours, Major. Private Trimble, sir. You're under military arrest, Private, and not privileged to salute. Besides, you enlisted as Private Gould, not Trimble. 
Yes, sir. Report to the guard outside. Yes, sir. Now, just a minute, Trumbull. You know that you're mighty lucky, don't you? You should have died for what you'd done. <laughs> I told you I'd go free, Marshal. It'll catch up with you someday, Trumbull. It always does, somehow. That's all I wanted to say. Yes, sir. Well, thank you, Marshal. I'll be getting along. Uh, Major, hmm? you said you were sorry that the judge didn't convict him. Why have you changed your mind? Marshal, now he won't even be tried. Not for some months, anyway. Right. You mean that the Seven doesn't want him anymore? Oh, they want him all right. My new orders are to send him right up to the Dakotas. Oh? Uh -huh. Seems that the Seventh Cavalry needs every man available. They're leaving Fort Lincoln soon on an expedition against the Sioux and the Northern Cheyenne. The Sioux, huh? I wonder if old Sitting Bull is still the chief medicine man with him. I'm sure he is. But at any rate, the Seventh will be heading into Montana territory. Yeah. Not if they're after Sitting Bull's tribe, they will. He's always had a large camp over on the Little Bighorn. Yes, I know. Um, by the way, who's in command of the Seventh Cavalry now? An officer I served under a couple of years. I never did care for him much. A Colonel George Custer. and directed by Norman MacDonald stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The music was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns were composed by Ray Kemper and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Parley Bear as Chester, Howard McNear as Doc, and Georgia Ellis as Kitty. George Walsh speaking. Join us again next week for another story of the western frontier of America in the 1870s on Gunsmoke. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. <laughs>